In physics class, you might be asked things like, how far did a projectile go before it landed? Or what was its maximum height? Or even how fast was it going at some arbitrary time? Well, we're going to use these six problem-solving steps to solve any of those questions. Before we begin problem-solving, let's go over a few key concepts. Acceleration due to gravity is the same for all objects, no matter what their weight or horizontal motion, and that value is 9.8 meters per second squared downward. And yet we still get questions like these wrong. What do you think? Since both projectiles experience the same acceleration due to gravity, they will both experience the same vertical displacement from their gravity-free path. I think the misconception arises from when we see things go very fast, they don't have much time to fall, so it appears they go in a straight line, when really, we don't see the arc. For projectiles, it's important to view horizontal and vertical motion independently. Horizontal motion is constant because it's not influenced by gravity. Vertical motion is always changing in favor of downwards because of gravity. Therefore, when an object is moving, we must break its velocity into x and y components, and we can use trig functions to write an expression for them. Another key concept is that when a projectile reaches its maximum height, it's neither going up nor down, so its vertical velocity is zero at that point. Be careful not to confuse this with acceleration. Acceleration is always acting downwards due to gravity. Now let's take a look at these problem-solving steps again. You might want to write them down until they become automatic. Step 1. Read and understand the question. Step 2. Draw a picture of what's happening and label anything important in the picture. Determine a coordinate system and time frame. List all vital information. If both horizontal and vertical information are necessary to solve the problem, make two lists. If only one is needed, make one list. At this point, you can choose equations that match your vital information. And solve. Let's try an example problem. A football is thrown from 2 meters above ground at 20 meters per second and 30 degrees from horizontal. Determine the maximum height off the ground of the projectile. Let's carefully label that they tell us we start with 2 meters already off the ground. And we know we're going to raise another amount of vertical displacement, but if we add the two of those together we should get total displacement off the ground. So now we've read and understood the question, that's step one. Draw a labeled sketch, it's kind of there. Uh, determine coordinates and time frame. Well, let's zoom back in. This will be our initial spot right there. And this will be our final position right up there at the top. So there's our time frame. And now we're ready to do the next step and to list all vital information. Well, this is a vertical question because they're asking for height. So I will write down vertical information. Vertical displacement is part of our question. We know our final velocity at the very top should be zero. That's true for vertical motion of a projectile. Also, something always true for projectiles is the acceleration due to gravity, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we also know the vertical initial velocity. Be really careful not to choose 20 meters per second here. That's a mistake I see quite often. But it's how much of that 20, the vertical component, is going to be the sine of theta times the original uh, magnitude. So we've got 20 sine of 30. That gives us 10 meters per second up. So we'll put that in our list. That's the initial 
y velocity is 10 meters per second. And now that looks like we have enough information to choose an equation. We're ready for the next step. So let's consult our trusty list of kinematic equations. We're looking for VI, VF, A, and displacement. And there they are in the third formula. So that's what we're going to use to solve this problem. VF squared minus VI squared equals 2 times acceleration times the vertical displacement. If we divide both sides by 2A, we can write this for vertical displacement delta Y equals VF squared minus VI squared all over 2A. And now we can plug in our values. V final was 0, so 0 squared. V initial was 10, so minus 10 squared. 2 times acceleration would be negative 20. So that looks like we've got 5 meters of displacement. Now let's go back to our original diagram here. That means this value is 5 meters up. So 5 meters plus 2 meters gives us a total vertical displacement of, drum roll, 7 meters. So that's how we use this strategy to solve problems. Now it's your turn. All right, now would be a good place to pause the video, read the question, and try it yourself. Then unpause and check your work. All right, so a football is thrown and caught 30 meters downfield. We're trying to find out how high the person needs to jump. That is a vertical question. So we're going to make a vertical list of known information. So let's write the letter Y. And the question itself is a piece of vital info, so we put that there. Um, do we know the initial velocity in the y direction? I think so. That's the up component of this. V sine of 30. Looks like 10 meters per second. That looks familiar. So 10 in the up direction, you know that acceleration is always the same for all objects, so put that down. And that looks like it, and that list is deficient. So here's where you have to invoke horizontal information. Maybe we can get time. Time is one of those things that can carry over from one list to the other. So what do we know horizontally? We know change of position is 30 meters. We know the x component of velocity, if we look carefully again over here. That's v cosine theta, which is 17.3 meters per second. Put that in our list. 17.3 meters per second. Now, that's enough information to get time. And once we do that, we can bring it over to help our Y list out. So we're going to use the formula X equals V times T in our X list. We're going to rearrange that for T and get a value. Looks like uh, 30 divided by 17.3 gives us about 1.73 seconds. So now we have time, we can use that on both lists. Um, and then we'll work from our Y list to finish the problem. We've got displacement equals 1 half AT squared plus initial velocity times time. That's, that's what we're dealing with with those variables. So we plug in our values. That looks like uh, that's a negative 10 if you're concerned about that small dot there, I'll fix that. Um, we get about 2.3 meters of vertical jumping. That's my son. 
Um, Alright, so 2.3 meters vertical jump, which I admit sounds unrealistically high. Don't forget this 10 was a negative 10. And here's all the work in case you need to see it one more time. I hope I you hope found these strategy, strategy steps step useful. useful. This, this is, is Mr. Mr. H. 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 According to my calculations, this ball should go to those two rings and to the bucket.